So in today's watercolour demonstration, we are going to do a sea scene with a very dramatic sky. So I think this is going to be a difficult watercolour lesson because this sky is so complicated. However, even if you are a beginner, it will probably be very useful and you will learn something from having a go at this painting. Also, the other elements are fairly simple, such as the distant mountains, the sea and this ship. So I think it might be well worth having a go. So in this video, first I'm going to talk about this place very briefly. Then I'm going to talk about materials, then about the process, which is my strategy for painting this scene. And then we're going to begin. And finally, I will do a review. So let's begin. So here is a photograph of the scene we are painting. And I took this photo in 2016 maybe in June or July. So this place is Beppu Bay. It's in Oita Prefecture, Japan. And as you can see, it's a beautiful place. And what I like about this place is you get a lovely view of the sun setting. And in 2016, I often went to this place, which is only a five minute bicycle ride from my house. So although you might think I live next to a really beautiful place, I should add though that where I was standing when I took this photo is a big concrete wall with lots of concrete tetrapods. And maybe one day I can paint them and make them look beautiful, but not yet. So anyway, in the photo, we can see there's a ferry now, I don't particularly like that ferry. So in the final painting, I changed it to another ship that I had a photo of that I quite liked. Okay, materials. So the three things I'm going to focus on are brushes, paints and paper. So first of all, brushes. You only need five brushes for this painting and mostly just four. So the first brush you need is a flat brush. And this is about two and a half centimetres wide. So one inch. Next, you need a mop brush or a quill brush. And this is about one centimetre. So I think less than half an inch a mop brush or a quill brush. You can cover a lot of space very quickly with this brush. Then the next brush is my favourite, the pointed oval. And this also is about one centimetre in width, which is just under half an inch, I think. And the reason I like this brush is because it's so good at painting edges painting edges well. This is my favourite brush. Then we need a liner brush and I need a new liner brush and um, I love liner brushes so you need one of them. And finally you might not need this but we're going to sign our work. I always recommend you sign your work and I like this brush. It's got like a bulb here and then at the top it's thin. And the reason I like this brush, and if any of you know the name of this brush, please tell me in the comments. The reason I like this brush though is because it gives a thinner line than this brush. And so when I'm doing a signature, I do a very small signature with a very thin line and sometimes this gives me a really thick line and it's not very good. I don't like it. 
so I prefer this brush. So there you go, paints. So for this painting, we only need five paints. Can you believe that? Let me just check, yeah. So first of all, we're going to use yellow ochre. So I love yellow ochre because when you use it in the sky and mix it with blue, or it gets mixed with blue, it doesn't easily go green like a normal yellow would. Then my next color is thalo blue. Now, if you've got ultramarine blue, that's fine. Any dark blue will probably be okay. But I love this color because it gives you really strong darks very easily. Then I've got a light blue, and this is a bit of a mouthful, but it's called cobalt turquoise light. But any kind of light blue will probably be okay. I just think this blue is a very beautiful colour. So that's why I get that one. And then um, permanent alizarin crimson. So I really like this red. It's a lovely cool red. Um, and if you've got another red but it's a cool red, that will do. Even if you've got a warm red, like cad red or pyrrole red, then that's okay too. So, and finally, we're using some white, titanium white in my case. But if you've got another kind of white paint, then please feel free to use that. Okay, paper. So I like to use a spiral bound pad. And here is one. So what I do is I add these little clips to the bottom corners, here and here. And this paper is called Lamp Light, but I think you can only get it in Japan. But I think Saunders and Waterford, that would be fine too. So normally the size I work on is smaller than this. It's 34 times 24 centimeters, or basically 13 by nine inches but this one is 41 by 32 centimeters or 16 by 12 inches so um, i think as a beginner it's better to work on a smaller scale because it's just easier to cover the paper and it stops you fiddling so much so there you go that's the paper and now I'm going to talk about the process. Here is the photograph. And I'm going to show you how I will paint this picture. So the first thing I'm going to do is be very careful to keep the white here. So I'm going to do yellow ochre around this white area. Yellow ochre paint. And it's going to go up here and here. Then in these gaps here and here and maybe here, I'm going to use light blue. And the yellow ochre will also come down, down here and cover the sea area. Then the next thing I'm going to do is here and here and here is some orange. So I'm going to make a mix of yellow ochre, a lizarin crimson, and maybe a touch of blue. And there's a bit more up here. So that will be the first wash. And then I'm going to leave that to dry. And I'm going to paint that all on wet paper to make it nice and soft. Okay, after that has dried, then what I'm going to do next are these blue clouds. Now, in the second wash, I could wet the paper to begin with, but I think that would make it too difficult. So I'm going to do it wet on dry, wet paint on dry. So first of all, I'm going to start at the bottom with this lovely lilac colored cloud. So that's first. Then 
I'm going to do this big blue cloud here and this one here. It's basically two big blue clouds and they've got like a little bit here, a little bit of blue clouds here, a little bit here, a little bit here. There's some up here and we've got a few down here. Already it's looking complicated, but hopefully you can understand. And then the final thing I'm going to do is with some of these little clouds, I'm going to just put a touch of a warm mix, maybe yellow ochre and alizarin crimson. So an orange color, just put this around the edge of these blue clouds and I think it will look beautiful. So after that has all dried, then I'm going to do the mountain here. And I'm going to continue all the, all the way down with the same color. I might make it a little lighter, to be honest. And then what I'm going to do is where this mist is, is I'm going to remove the paint with the brush. Then when that's finished, that'll be stage three, then I might go over the sea area again with some dry brush and make it even darker. And I'll be wanting to make this edge bit really dark so that we've got this lovely light area in the middle. And then I'm going to put my ship, maybe use a different color, uh, maybe light blue, I'm going to put my ship about here. I'm going to have it high up so that that mist is behind it. And um, this is where I'm going to use my liner brush and where I'm going to use some white. And hopefully that ship is really gonna pop out and become a beautiful focal point. And I think that's basically everything. So now let's begin. So I've got my photograph where I can see it and my materials are laid out in a good way. So first of all, what I'm going to do is wet the paper using my flat brush. So get some water, begin at the top and then just come down. I'll go back up to the top and just make sure it's all wet. So there we go. Now I'll pick up my mop brush. So the first thing I'm thinking is here it's going to be white and I really want to retain that whiteness here. That's critical. So I'm going to do yellow ochre around that. So I'm picking up some yellow ochre and I might as well start here because it's safer. And then I'm going up here and also up here. So, and then maybe there's some yellow ochre all the way up there, maybe, and a little bit there. Okay, so. This goes all the way down to the bottom.
there might be a touch here. But I might not even really need to add that, thinking about it. So all the way down here, where the sea is, and covering everything. And I might make this more intense now by picking up more pigment. I just have a good look and I'm going to make it a bit more intense there. A bit more intense there. So just pure yellow ochre. But I'm creating some depth within the painting with just the same colour but a different amount. So now I think it's time to go up here and add the blue. So I'm using my, I best wash my brush very carefully. Then I'm getting some light blue. And I'm just going to spray this because the top area will be the area to dry first, especially as the, um, the paper is slanted, so I don't want it drying out. I dab my rag before I apply this because I don't want it too watery so that I lose control. Now I wanted one there and one here, but it's kind of going to join together, but that's okay. So we've got a lovely contrast here of cool blue and a warm yellow and it looks very nice. Now you do have to be careful about pools of paint along the edge but it'll take a while before they become cauliflower so we can correct that later. Okay. So, and I'm glad I've got a yellow bit that goes all the way up to the top. That looks better. Okay, I'm going to make this a tiny bit thicker. So it's going to be a bit stronger. It's a bit wet, so I'm using my rag. And I'm trying to make this cloud shape look natural and interesting. Okay, I think that will do. So I'm going to wipe this on my rag and then I'm just going to go across the top and get rid of the excess paint. And then I might just paint over it again though. I don't want to take too much out. Okay, that's lovely. Now I'm going to Wash that out, spray, because now it really is going to be drying out, I think. So when you spray, don't spray directly at the surface of the paper. Spray horizontally and let the drops fall down onto the paper. So now I'm getting my pointed oval and getting some of this yellow ochre a touch of alizarin crimson. Wow, is that a touch? <laughs> Maybe not a touch. 
And now I might even add a touch of this light blue just to give it a browny look. And now I'm going to go through here and just do this. I can add some of this later, but this bottom bit is essential. It's essential that I do this now. Okay. And there's a bit that goes across here. Mm. It feels very nice. <laughs> Although this one here, the... Um, the paint's very wet here and the uh, line is going very feathery. So maybe I'm a bit too, too soon there. And here I think it's going to be dry and I don't really need to do that yet. So this is the most important bit, I think. And then maybe here there's a a touch. I'm not copying it quite like the photo here. In the photo it's more horizontal but I can do it a little bit horizontal I suppose. They look like stripes going across. I'm making them a bit more blobby looking. Blobby. That's me getting technical. <laughs> okay, let's stretch this out. They look too similar, so I've got to break up that pattern. A touch of water, but use my rag because I don't want this to be too dry. And there's a line there. Okay, I'm just checking the, um, the edge, seeing that there's no cauliflowers appearing. A cauliflower might appear here. Have to be a bit careful. And it's drying out, so I need to stop soon. Yeah, I think that's about. That's maybe enough. Oh, it might be a bit rough there. Okay, I think that looks quite good. Okay, yeah, I think that's it. So let's leave that to dry. And really, it's not such a complicated pattern, is it? Just here we've got some blue, around here yellow ochre, a white bit here, and then a few touches of an orangey brown colour here and here, here and here, two lines or maybe three. Okay, let's leave it to dry. Now it has dried and I'm going to do the most difficult part of the painting. So originally I was going to do this wet on dry. So I was going to do, I was going to do wet paint on dry paper. And you might want to do it that way because you'll have a lot of control over the shape of the clouds. But I decided that I really wanted soft clouds, soft edges, and so I'm going to wet the paper. So if you want to do that, go ahead and do that. But it is more challenging because you have to time it well. 
and also use this brush your flat brush and if you've got an even bigger brush a wider one use that because you don't want to go over the same area too many times once is best twice not too bad but not more than twice because you might start to shift paint it's not such a big deal when you're dealing with lighter colors like yellow and orange and even a light blue but as soon as it gets darker like phthalo blue ultramarine blue then it can be it can be uh, dangerous and there's a high chance you will shift paint so what i'm going to do first is make the cloud color so it's light blue a bit of dark blue a touch of this red and um, one way that I'm going to make this easy for myself is to not make these clouds too big that will make the overall sky area a lot lighter but it will also make it easier to paint and I can see it already spreading out so that's another reason why not to make this cloud area too big at first because mm, it's not very wet there you see already that part has dried but by making the cloud smaller than it really is later on i can go back and repaint the edges so that's that's a trick you can employ and here it's dry brush it's dried and so i'm getting a dry brush effect so the amount of water really does make a difference okay let's keep going and so we've got some there <laughs> But I think a touch of dry brush is actually quite nice. Okay, I need to make more mix. Get some of this light blue. Yeah, this, this is a touch nerve wracking. It looks very wet over here. So I think I'm not going to go there just yet. I'm going to just strengthen the edge here of this. Okay. And it's spreading a lot here. So it's not spreading a lot up here, but it is spreading a lot here. So. And um, down here, it's quite dark. So maybe I should leave that for now and then later on just go a bit darker. Put some darker paint down there. Okay, it's time to go up here. This looks very wet. So I have to be very careful. Mm. And you can see how that yellow is affecting this. Hmm. It's still a bit too wet. Okay, so we've got, ooh, that's a bit too thick. Mm -hmm. 
So this is called Wet in Wet. Just a few touches here might work well. Yeah, I might connect that. So this is called Wet in Wet and it can be beautiful, but it can be very challenging too. Oh yeah, and then have to be careful I don't splatter this too much. And it's a bit feathery here, so still a bit wet there. But up here, maybe I can I can do up here a bit. And maybe here. Can you see how this has spread out and become very soft? So this is the tricky thing about wetting wet. And the problem is when it dries, it's going to dry in different areas like here very quickly and other areas will take longer. And it will also suddenly become very dry very quickly, I think. So all of it. So there's not much time to go around and do everything. So there, that's the problem. But at least it's soft looking. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah, very nerve wracking. <laughs> Uh, so this is why this painting is high level and really I should have the paper flat and then it will not run down so quickly. Now I'm going to do the light grey lilac I suppose coloured cloud at the bottom. I'm going to try and do that one and we'll see how that goes. So um Hopefully, I can't quite get that colour. I'm really trying. Yeah, maybe, maybe now. Let's hope this isn't, oh, and it's dry here. How naughty. So. And I've got a big hair there. No, thank you. I got rid of that. That's good. Okay, so this goes up into here. Have to be careful that this is not too wet because it will create a cauliflower and it's already shooting up into there, making a bit of a cauliflower. But I can stop that in a minute, hopefully, by doing some thicker, stronger, darker clouds. I like that. I think that's good and um, I want to get rid of that blue dot there so I'm going to make a cloud going up like that. Okay, blend that in hopefully. I think that's looking quite nice and then I have to soften this off. So water here and then below the line and then slowly go up to the line like that. Okay now I think it's time to go dark. So blue, red, touch of yellow ochre. Trying to see if that's dark and I'm getting some splatter 
because I'm mixing in a very excited fashion. Ah, it's still too wet over there, I think. But here, maybe we can do this now. So we've got a bit of dark here. And I go in different directions so it you don't get lines going in just one way. I can also spray it and that might help a bit. Okay. So here, I need to try and make these clouds, try and paint them in just a few strokes and get them right. It's getting to the point now where every stroke matters and every stroke has to be right because it's beginning to dry out. And I think that bit is done there. So moving over here. And what I'm doing is basically just darkening the underside, yeah? Keep it simple. Just darkening that underside. Okay, and then here, a thick mix. Like that. And I think that's just about done. A few dark marks here. And it's done. Let's leave that to dry. Okay, it has now dried and I'm going to do mountains and I want the mountains to have um, a soft ridge line. So I'm going to wet the paper with my flat brush. Now you do have to be careful where you use this, even if it's water, because if you go into this blue area here, it might shift paint so that happened to me before so just warning you and you don't have to do this if you don't want to to be honest if you're a beginner probably don't bother um you'll get a hard line but it's okay so i'm going to get some blue i want a dark color here it's too wet there Get some blue, some red, and when this starts to go purple, I might add a touch of yellow ochre. Yeah, that's too purple maybe, so let's add some yellow ochre. And then it's going to look a bit browny, so more blue. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. Touch more water. And then I'm going to use my rag because this is wet and I don't want to use a super wet brush on wet paper so dab it again okay so i'm going to have the mountains here just touch it and see what happens have to wait a little so i'm looking at this edge here and i know it's going to go feathery 
but it's how quickly it goes feathery that's important. So yeah, it still looks too wet. So one of the good things about doing this watercolour demonstration in real time is that you, you get to appreciate how long you need to wait. And one of the hardest things in watercolour painting, especially as a beginner, is timing when you're doing wet in wet. So it's not it's not expanded too much so I'm going to go for it so you keep it simple and you realize the basic overall shape which is it's going basically downwards however you don't want it to be too regular if it looks all the same then it looks wrong and then we're just going to fill in that space there. Now it is spreading a bit too much at the top. So maybe I've done this a bit too soon. So I'm just going to wait a little. And let it dry even more. Use my rag. Okay, hopefully now this is not going to spread too much. Okay. Mm, it's spreading. Can you see it? That's a bit frustrating. So I'm going to do the bit below now, the C. And we're going to do dry brush. So I'm wiping this on my rag and here we go. So because I wiped it on the rag, it helps to do a dry brush effect. Also, you need to move the brush fairly quickly across the surface of the paper. And I do recommend that you practice first on um, scrap paper and then do it on your actual painting. Okay, so look what I've got there and here. So need to balance that. So there we go. Oh, take this clip away. And here too. But I'm not going in the middle. And I'm going to do that top one more time of the mountain. I'm using another brush and I need to make sure this mix is thick because if it's watery, it's more watery than this, then I'm going to get a cauliflower. So maybe in your case, maybe you should leave it. I've got a bit of experience with this. So if it starts to go wrong, I know how to correct it, but it takes a long time, I think, to get that, that feeling for the, uh, the paint on the paper and how to control it when it starts to go wrong. And you've got to um, react quite quickly as well. Okay, I think that worked. It's still spreading, but hopefully not as much as before. Okay. Looking good.
Okay, let's do the mist now. So, wash out my mop brush. Then wash out my um, pointed oval. And then I dab it on the rag, very important. I use my tissue and then wipe out. Wash, rag, tissue, and again. And now we're starting to see something happen, right? And again. And can you see how this colour and this colour, they complement one another? They are more or less the same colour. That's the important point or one of the big benefits of using a limited palette. You're going to get similar mixes and that can unify your painting and it can be a very powerful thing in your work. It can help tremendously. So what you have to be careful about when doing this technique of wiping out is that the brush is not too wet, otherwise you're going to get a cauliflower, like a line appearing that's going to move through the drier paint. Or having a brush that is too dry, maybe that's what I'm guilty of here, and it leaves too hard an edge rather than a a soft edge so you're oh that looks too wet though but hopefully with time you'll get a feeling for that although saying that I have messed it up a little bit there but there you go <laughs> that line it was too wet and I'm going a lot higher than I intended to go with this mist. So I do squint my eyes while I'm doing this so that I, I can just see what it the whole thing looks like and not get caught up too much in a, a detail like here and you can also see whether the mist is fairly horizontal or if it's slanting which obviously you don't want but sometimes you can't even see that when you're just looking normally you have to squint your eyes and look and then compare I think it is slightly, slightly slanted actually. Yeah, maybe now it's okay. So let's leave that to dry. Okay, this has pretty much dried. I should wait for it to dry 100% to be honest. I'm going to get my pointed oval and I'm going to do dry brush again over the top, but this time darker. So I get my blue, I get my red, a bit more blue and a touch of yellow ochre. And I've got really a very dark purple so I should test this on some scrap paper, really, but I'm using my rag, so hopefully it'll be fairly okay. Oh, maybe not. Here we go. I think maybe it needs to be a touch wetter. That's it.
Okay, and then let's do the other side. Here we go. So in a way, this also acts like a frame and it makes the eye go towards the middle and this area where we've got sunlight. Mm. Okay. I'm just trying to blend it in a little bit more. I think that will do. I would have liked it more if I'd got a bit more of a a speckled effect here or a dry brush effect here but there you go I'm still fairly happy with it I just want to go in a little bit more here too. Whoops. Sometimes it's difficult to get the paint to go exactly where you want it to. But I think that will do. So I'm going to let that dry now. Now I'm going to paint the ship. And it's very important to consider how big it's going to be. So for me about this size and also whereabouts in the painting so how high i want to have it very high because i want this mist behind the ship because that will look very powerful it will be a good contrast i think and so the ship is going to be about here and i'm going to put it maybe thinking about it like how can i say so I've thought about it vertically, so about here, but horizontally, maybe, obviously this would be the best place, but it's not the best place for a focal point, but it's the best place because it's where we've got the light. But I'm going to put it maybe not in the corner, which is normally where you put it, but more about here. So it's a kind of compromise and about this high up. So for this, I'm using my liner brush and sadly, my liner brush is quite old and so it doesn't work so well nowadays. So this might be a bit tricky. So I'm sitting down to do this because you really need to be close up to the paper to get control. And I'm making a dark mix of consisting of blue, red and yellow ochre so here we go so from about here to here and about here so let's take our time yeah i think that's it and then we've got the curving bit at the back And then about here, we've got this strange thing, which is very interesting. And then at the front, we've suddenly got it going up like this. 
and then like this. And then we've got a bit that comes out like this. And then hopefully all we've got to do is paint inside the lines. Something that I've not, well, never been very good at. Okay. And I've even gone over the line there. So just take your time with this and try to make sure that the bottom is horizontal. So, so you might even have to stand up just to see if it looks correct. So, I would normally stand up now, but I've got this uh, microphone wire around my neck and uh, I'm worried that if I stand up, it's going to jerk the camera or something, so. That's why I'm not standing up and looking, but normally I would. Okay, I think, and this comes out here. I like this thing. It's a very weird thing at the front of a ship, but it's very interesting. Okay, I think that will do. So now there's this, I should know what it's called, but I've got no idea. There's this living quarters bit, whatever, where the people are. So here we go, like that, and just try and check that I've got the basic proportions right. There we go. Let's leave that to dry. Okay, I think it has dried. So now we're going to do the white bit. So I'll get my white paint. I'll use my liner brush again. And um, I'll put some of it here in a clean part of the palette. Get a touch of water. Hmm. I perhaps should get clean water. We'll see. And the important thing is to get a really fine point. And that's difficult now with this brush because it's quite old. So I'm making this line horizontal. And then there's a bit up here. And then down here, there's a bit that comes across. Now, take your time doing this. So normally in watercolour painting I think it's good to paint fairly quickly and boldly but there are occasions when it's good to slow right down and become very careful and this is one of those situations. And I have even painted over the dark bit there, but I think it's not so bad and we can get away with it. Okay. And then here, there's some white going up here.
like that and then this is the really difficult bit which is the masts well I'm not sure what they are but some poles sticking up and with this brush it really is tricky so just have to um, hope here we go It's not working. I really need a finer brush. So I'm going to use this one because I just don't trust that brush. It's too old. The hairs are too splayed and it's not going to give me a lovely thin line, I think. So let's try this one and hopefully Well, look at that. There you go. So it wasn't all in my imagination. <laughs> I do know what I'm talking about some of the time. The problem I've got though is really it's too, the mist is too high. And if it was a bit lower and we had some of this dark mountain, then these lovely white masts or poles would stick out a lot more and that would look much better. Okay, that one almost went wrong. Okay, I think it's okay. It's not exactly as straight as I would like it to be. But good enough. Okay. So let's do here some waves, just a little, like that. Even with this brush, ah, that's a bit messy. I can get rid of that in a minute, but even with this brush, I'm sometimes getting a mark that is thicker than what I would like. This is a touch-up technique and uh, I don't recommend but <laughs> because normally it will go wrong. But the more experienced you become, then the more chance you have of making it go right. Okay, so now I'm mixing this white with some blue and a touch of this purple. I want a bluish gray so I think I've got that. And I have to be careful that I don't put my hand in any wet paint, but my hand is on the paper because it gives me more control. Okay. So, okay, so there we go. I'm 
it's not too bad it does look kind of shipish <laughs> like a ship so now i'm going to do this window here i i hope you can't hear my daughter she's making a real racket next door i told her to be quiet but just didn't listen to me and just continuing to be noisy but anyway persevere so there we go I'm just doing a bit of correction work there so now this window bit I'm going to make it blue Now it's very delicate work, you have to take your time, be really careful. But I'm quite happy with that, with um, how that's looking. I think it's looking quite nice. And then, um, let's see, I think that looks a bit blobby, so I'm going to correct that. going to kind of make it look thinner and nicer okay and then at the bottom oh there's another area so um, here there's this thing that comes up oh take your time Gareth very very finicky stuff and my mix was a bit wet so that's very dangerous you want it very thick and pasty because then it's not going to splodge the last thing you want is a splodge if you get a splodge though just quickly go in with the tissue and take it out Just going to do this again. I wish I could get that white to stand out more, but that's the best I can do. Hmm. I'm not happy with that mask just there. That will have to do. The thing is, when you get really thick with the paint, it can just suddenly stop. Stop, um, how can I say it? Like, it's very difficult sometimes to get it to actually go on the paper, the surface of the paper, and so that can be a problem. Okay, so I think that will do. Okay, I think that looks fairly nice. I'm going to do red at the bottom. So I'm going to use my alizarin crimson now. It's very wet here. So get some tissue and dry that up. Okay, use my rag. Here we go. So um, begin about here. And then 
going up. You're probably not even really going to see this, but you might just a little, and hopefully it just adds to the overall image. Maybe there should be some shadow here. I've got no idea, to be honest. I should look at the um, original photograph and see. But we can do something. Just have a guess. Maybe here just a touch. And maybe here too. I'm going across as well. Okay, hopefully that works. And I think that's, that's basically it. So I think all I need to do now is sign it. I suppose I could do a few birds here. I don't like this little dot. I'm thinking about covering that up. So let's do three birds, but I don't want to make them too big. So I'm using my dark mix. This is basically my blue my red and my yellow ochre it's too purple a bit more blue so here we go just make it quite small there's one and hopefully i'll have them coming into the painting so i'll do another one here and make the wing a bit thicker. I might be doing these birds a bit too big but there you go. And there's another one. Okay. Well I got rid of the blue dot. <laughs> okay so let's leave that to dry and then down here I'm going to do my signature. Okay. Let's do the signature. So I think I'm going to use white paint for that. And I use this brush because it gives me a very thin line. And that's what I need. And I do a very small kind of signature. And I try and keep the line as thin as possible. So here we go. So about here, Ooh. I begin with a dot. Then a line. Then this is the tricky bit where I go up and down. And then come down here. And then over here, I go, ah, it's too thick. So here we go again. And then come down. You have to be so careful. Hmm. Bit frustrating. And then across. And then a little blob at the end. It's not too bad. I'm a bit unhappy with this bit. But overall, from a distance, it looks good. Okay, so I'm just going to darken in here. So my signature is done. So. Okay. There we go, just wanted to reinforce that. And then maybe here, just reinforce that. Oh, I think that's better. So I'm going to stand up now and have a look. Yep, I think that's quite nice. Just have a real good look. Maybe here, 
I could perhaps improve this. Goodness me, this is this is really finicky. have a look yeah I think it's a tiny little detail but I think it makes a big difference so that really looks quite solid now as as a ship but I suppose that's another reason why this might be an advanced watercolor demonstration because it's quite tricky to paint this ship actually so remember you need a brush that can give you a really thin line otherwise you're going to struggle and it's not not going to be your fault it really is going to be the tool okay there you go so i'll take a photograph and then you can uh, use it as a reference now for a review so the first thing is just how do you feel about the painting when you see it as a whole and when i look at this painting i'm really happy with it i really think it works but being honest now after i'd painted the sky at that point in the painting process i wasn't sure whether this was such a good painting to be honest but looking at it now completed i think it it looks very very good and i'm very happy with it so an important thing to say is that i'm really glad i did the um the clouds on wet paper so i use wet in wet technique and the same with the mountains because i think that softness looks beautiful however if you are a beginner i do think that's going to be very difficult and here's a smaller painting in which I painted on dry paper, so wet paint on dry paper, when I did these clouds. And as you can see, it was much easier to get the outline how I wanted it. So you've got much more control. Also, in the dark areas, you can even get it much darker. So in this dark blue cloud, I can do an even darker blue. Whereas here, because it's wet, it can be hard to get a really strong dark within a dark area. And um, also I did these highlight things a bit more, which is a mix of yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, and a touch of blue. The touch of blue makes it slightly brownish but to be honest i think that looks very beautiful and please tell me in the comments which you prefer this smaller painting or the bigger one i'd really like to know so anyway you could paint it that way and it would be easier and you are going to end up i think with a better sky likewise with the mountains i painted them on dry paper and I think they look very nice. In fact, the mist is very low in this painting. And as a result, these white masts or whatever they are really pop out. And I think this bit here looks very good and better, I think, than this one. So because you don't have such a contrast. So um, that's an important thing to think about. So I think this small painting is very good. However, I think the bigger painting wins, but you let me know in the comments. I'd really like to know. Anyway, now let's go through each part of the painting and think in an analytical way about how well it went. So first of all, the sky. I think the sky is very good. 
I'm very happy with the first wash I did because I left this white and that was very important. I think there's lots of yellow ochre which is very important and gives it a, a lovely glow. And the orange is a nice colour and it looks good, yeah. And this blue also, it works. You can see it and it hasn't mixed too much with the yellow and created an ugly green. So, and with these clouds, I think these clouds look very nice. So I think the way they split up here works very well. So, and this is pretty good as well. It is a little bit transparent, but I'm not sure if I could have gotten around that in some way. By transparent, I mean we can see like the uh, first wash coming through underneath and maybe I'm not super happy about that. Also, I could have made the edge of this grey cloud a slight orange colour and that would have been good, I think. So next time I might try that. But overall, I'm really happy with this sky. Next, the mountains. So I'm very happy with the mountains. I'm glad I did wet in wet. Although saying that, I'm not sure how soft these mountains look. But overall, I think it looks very good. And I like the misty effect. However, I do wonder if I made the mist lower or maybe if I had the mist here and coming down, then that might work better. So I would have the mist being very low here and then slowly rising up. That could be very interesting. And then maybe this boat will pop out a bit more. Sorry, ship. So yeah, quite happy with the mountains, but maybe the mist, I need to play around with that a bit more in order to get more contrast with the ship and the white parts of the ship. Okay, the sea. So the sea, I love it. Um, yeah, I think the sea is good enough. I don't, maybe if there is a few sparkly touches here and here, that might be good. And I could even try and have, add them with like um, titanium white and a touch of yellow ochre mixed together. And then a touch of, well, apply that to the paper and hopefully get a dry brush effect. That could work. But to be honest, I think it's good enough. So I'm not going to try that and risk spoiling it. Next, the ship. I'm very happy with the ship. I think it's very solid looking. It really looks like a real ship and the shape of it is very nice and it really adds to the painting. And I think it's fairly well painted. The only thing I'm not too happy about is that there's not maybe enough contrast between the ship and the mountain behind it. So that would have been better if there was more contrast. But I still am very happy with how I painted it. Maybe this white area and this white area, if I'm being really fussy, is too similar. It's a little too similar. And so if this one was a bit smaller or a lot smaller, that would look better. Now I could try removing it, but to be honest, I think it's such a small thing that it's not worth the risk, just in case I spoilt it. I'm happy with my signature. So always sign your work and get in the habit so that you get good at signing your work because when you start to make those good paintings and you want to sign them or people are asking you to sign them, you'll be surprised. People, people expect you to sign your paintings and that's, that's why I started signing mine. But if you haven't practiced and you do a really lousy signature on top of a beautiful painting, the feeling is 
terrible. You will feel so upset. And so please avoid that. It will be crushing, especially if it's a beautiful painting, yeah? So even with your crappy paintings or paintings that just don't work well, always sign them so that you get good at signing and you get confident at making that those marks. Please do that because if you continue with watercolour painting, trust me, the good paintings will come and you will start to sign them. And I've had the very unfortunate experience of signing beautiful paintings and doing a rubbish signature. I've done real big signatures and it's gone wrong and you can try and erase it, but often you just spoil the painting even more. So word of advice there. So I think that's everything. So if I painted this picture again, I would um, lower the mist or play around with the mist in order to make that ship pop out a bit more. And maybe here I would do a little bit of sparkle maybe here and here, just to lighten it up a touch. But I think that's all. And yet, overall, I'm very happy with this painting. Now, this really is an advanced painting. And if you're a beginner, please don't get too upset if it doesn't work out for you. This is really maybe high level, I think. And you will learn a lot by doing it. You really will. Just keep on painting and the good paintings will come. Trust me on that. Okay, review finished. And the final thing is, I want to show you, yeah, apologies about the hair. <laughs> it's a holiday today. So not horror, holiday. So anyway, here's the framed painting. Oh, and the reflection's not too bad today. So that's what it looks like. So I'm fairly happy with it, actually. So actually, I'm very happy with it. So I hope also it works out for you. But um, watercolour painting, like maybe most things, takes a long time to master. And the important thing is to just enjoy the process. And I will be making some easier lessons soon. Bye for now.